For those of you who are new to these videos, my name is Jonathan Leonard. I am a brain science reporter, and in this video I would like to tell you about the brain and sleep. That's more exciting than you might think. From the brain's standpoint, sleep is not a dormant state. Rather, sleep is a dynamic state, one loaded with memory processing, a state filled with vigor and dreams and drama. If we look into this more deeply, we find that sleep is not uniform. Instead, sleep passes through a series of distinct stages that repeat themselves in roughly 90-minute cycles throughout the night. Much of what we know about sleep and its medley of repeating sleep stages comes to us through a simple device with a long name, the electroencephalograph, or EEG. The EEG detects brain waves. So it is worth asking how brain waves arise and what they are. Recall from our earlier videos that the brain processes lots of incoming and other information all at once, and that different sorts of processing happen in different places. So that at any given moment, millions of neurons just under some specific point on your scalp may be firing together in a more or less synchronous manner. If they are firing together in harmony, their millions of chemical impulses can create a weak electric charge at that point on your scalp. This charge has no reason to be the same as charges at other points on your scalp. Hence, if you place electrodes, little electrical detectors, at two or more points on the scalp and connect them with wires, Weak electric currents will pass through these wires, seeking to equalize the charges at the different points connected. And if you connect a sensitive electrical reader and writing pen to the wires, you can read these fast-changing currents over time, and you can chart them as brain waves, like those shown in the drawing. That's how an EEG works. Now the brain waves of sleep vary widely. When you're awake, Lots of little brain areas are processing lots of varied information, so the brain waves are fluctuating pretty fast and typically look like those shown here. As you get into bed, pull up the covers, and begin entering sleep, a stage known as sleep onset or stage one sleep, the brain waves slow and look more like this. Then, as you go deeper into sleep and enter stage 2 sleep, brain chemistry starts to change, and so does the way that certain brain structures operate. As a result, strange shapes begin appearing on the chart. Spindle-shaped forms, suitably named sleep spindles, and long waves called K-complexes. In addition, long waves called slow waves that last a half second or more and feature relatively high voltages, which make them relatively tall, begin emerging in stage 2 sleep. These slow waves merit attention. What causes them is a drastic change in brain activity. Because of big changes in brain chemistry and the working of certain brain structures, billions upon billions of neurons have entered a so-called hyperpolarized state that makes it very hard for them to fire at all. These neurons become engaged in a rhythmical burst firing pattern in which they essentially all fire at once and then remain silent until the next burst. This produces relatively high voltages on the scalp and relatively long-lasting ones, hence the slow waves seen on the EEG. From the standpoint of one reading an EEG, the slow waves are easy to spot. So where they exist, they can be used to define several different sleep stages. In stage 2 sleep, with its spindles and K-complexes, slow waves account for less than 20% of the EEG sleep record. When the slow waves come to dominate more than 20% of the sleep record, the sleeper has entered stage 3 sleep, and when they dominate over 50% of the record, he or she has entered stage 4 sleep, which is generally considered the deepest stage of all. The sort of burst firing that produces these slow waves is very different from the harmonized but diverse neural firing patterns seen in the waking state. 
This burst firing seems useful for certain kinds of memory processing involving well-established neural pathways, and it helps to prime neurons for changing some of their connections later during other sorts of memory processing. But it also imposes severe restrictions on admission of new information. This explains why a sleeper in stage 3 or stage 4 sleep is hard to rouse, and also why it takes him or her time to awaken fully, because it takes time to replace the brain chemistry of deep sleep with that of the waking state. Normally, however, one does not go from deep sleep to waking. Instead, something else happens. What we call rapid eye movement or REM sleep is released like a genie from its bottle. A trigger mechanism unleashes a flood of the neuromodulator acetylcholine from reservoirs deep in the brainstem, and a torrent of impulses coming up from the brainstem floods into the visual centers and also into that prime coordinator of visual information called the thalamus. As a result, the unusual burst firing stops. Brain activity diversifies, the slow waves vanish, and the brain produces an EEG pattern very much like that found when the brain's owner is awake. However, the source of excitement is not the outside world but the brainstem, and the brain's chemistry is oriented not toward rational thought but toward emotionally guided internal imaginings, something that in the waking state we would call hallucinations. As a result, in REM sleep you enter into another specialized sort of memory processing, this one very wide-ranging, and into a land of consciously coordinated dramatic dreams. As explained in the videos on consciousness, you have only one sense of consciousness. And since the apparent biological purpose of consciousness is to serve as the brain's general manager, we would expect to find consciousness present to a greater degree in situations requiring a lot of general management, and present to a lesser degree in situations requiring little general management or none at all. That's interesting because REM sleep seems to require lots of general management while slow-wave sleep does not. In slow-wave sleep, the dominant kind of neural processing is extremely repetitive and involves very few new inputs. So we may suppose that relatively little general management is needed. But in REM sleep, there are lots of new and diverse inputs that need processing. And what we find, in fact, is that both consciousness and dramatic dreams are prominent in REM sleep, suggesting that the memory processing of REM sleep has a powerful need for the sort of general management that consciousness provides. We don't know for sure why these sleep stages arose, but we have theories. For instance, so far as we know, reptiles have no nighttime slow waves, but they do have daytime slow waves. So it's certainly possible that as mammals evolved from reptiles, Slow waves moved over into sleep to assist with nighttime memory processing. It's also true that REM style activity plays a dominant role before birth, presumably to assist with organization of the fetal brain. So it also appears possible that as the brain evolved, REM moved out of the fetal brain to help in another way with memory processing. Now both slow waves and REM sleep seem dedicated to processing memory and improving the brain's content. So we may speculate that as the mammalian brain evolved, problems arose in managing the office files. More intense sleep time memory processing was needed. And so REM sleep moved up from the fetal period, slow wave sleep moved over from the reptilian waking state, and both came to make important contributions to the memory processing of sleep. As all this demonstrates, sleep is not a simple thing. All this complex memory processing and all these sleep stages repeating in roughly 90 minute cycles throughout the night are not a simple thing. Problems can happen. Various sorts of sleep disorders can occur. So before focusing on memory and memory processing by the human brain, I would like to devote some time to sleep disorders. These are the subject of my next three videos.